Okay, welcome to this glorious attendance. <laughs> okay, I'm going to talk about uh, Mavibot, which is one of my pet projects right now. Maybe we can close the doors because it's uh, noisy outside. Welcome. Yeah, we, we are just trading, you know, number for quality, that's it. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, my pet project right now, beside uh, other projects and their jobs. Um, if I can switch, but I see the magic turning ball. Thanks, Mac. What's going on? Yeah, this is definitely my day. So maybe, but is uh, MVC. Every one of you is um, comfortable or know what is MVCC? Have you heard about it? B trees, I guess. Okay. Um, let me try something. Have we heard about MVCC? Yeah. It's, yeah, the multi-version. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. What the fuck is going on? Okay. Let me restart. So uh, I can do my slide by what I have in mind, doesn't matter. Um, I'm a part of the Apache Software Foundation, member, uh, member since uh, 2007. Uh, I'm working on three different, uh, two different projects. The first one, which is Apache Directory Server, and the second one, which is MINA, the um, network related layer. And I will switch it up differently. Brutally. That's it. And maybe, but has been this uh, started a little bit more than one year ago because I needed something to replace uh, B3 we were using on Apache Directory Server for many reasons. As soon as the, server, the computer will have been rebooted and the slide on, we can start. We started maybe, but because we didn't find any Java implementation for uh, B3, MVC B3, uh, that was decision it was quite difficult to take because it's quite a lot of job to do it correctly, uh, but we didn't find anything with the correct license, which are compatible with Apache. It never did it for me for the very first time. Okay, so maybe but means blue, blue boat in, in Turk. And what's going on? Why do we have just one slide? Doesn't matter. Um, the name was found for, by some uh, Turkish uh, committer on Apache Directory Server, and uh, I found it a, quite a good name. Uh, also, you can see that MVBT and maybe both goes white together. Okay, so let's first introduce uh, what are B trees. Uh, for those of you who don't, don't know about it, I will, be, I will go very quickly through those, those things. Um, can we just have something which is bigger than this? Um, 
Are you seeing correctly? Can you just look at some guy? You see, it's problematic. So B3 are balanced uh, data structure where we have uh, nodes and leaves. Uh, nodes does not contain values. Leaves are containing values. And you can have uh, three different kind of operation on those trees, addition, deletion, and uh, browsing, of course. Uh, nodes are containing, oh, gosh. Sorry, we, we have a technical issue. I had to reboot my computer. So now we have those source slide. Somebody will come to, to get fix it. A node has, has uh, a minimal of n under, and uh, up to n keys, and um, not less than n divided, divided by two keys. That, that monetary to have um, a compact and dense B tree. Uh, for, for the root node, that can be different. We can have at least one single node key in the root node. For the leaves, to, Exactly the same thing. We can have values in the leaves, and we can have uh, n divided by two values, and up to n values. If we have an empty B tree, of course, we have no values at all, so the, the leaf will be totally empty. That's a very uh, simple uh, uh, um, principle. We know that a B tree has a log, log, um, log cost for any operation. Uh, addition, modification, uh, search, uh, to guarantee that we can access uh, the B tree in a concurrent way. We are mainly using locks that guarantee constancy. Uh, on average, B tree will contain at least three quarters of uh, an element per leaf or per node. That's because we have at least half of a number of key in each leaf and, B and nodes. So we consider that there are more than half uh, full. Uh, one of the issues with B3 is that it's complex to add a um, uh, transaction to it. Uh, sorry, I uh, had to reboot my computer, so now I don't have the slides correct. I don't know what's going on. I must be, you know. Sorry? Did, you, did you use the presenter view, or are you okay with uh, having it mirrored? I don't mind. Okay. Something that works. Okay, that's better. Thanks. Okay, what are battery used for? Mainly for database, where we have batteries all over, even if we don't see it. And file system are using B3 extensively. So for any of you using Linux or whatever, NTFS it's for Windows, you have B3s all over your machine. I guess this is nothing new for you. It's just a very quick reminder what B3 are. MVCC, for those of you who don't know what MVCC is, everybody have heard about it? No. MVCC is something which allows you to keep uh, may, many versions of a single B3 uh, in memory or on disk uh, at the same time. I mean, you, uh, if you think about what is doing for in some subversion or any uh, version, source version control, this is what you have. You can grab another ver an older version whenever you want, and you have the guarantee that what you get won't be modified by any modification coming on, on top of it. That's very important. So, uh, one good point about the MVCC is that as you have a copy of a new, each new version is a copy of something which existed, uh, so then you, you can just get rid of logs because logs uh, are not anymore necessary. You are guaranteed that you will not modify something that is used by somebody else. That's very important. Also, it allows us to build transaction on top of uh, the system quite easily. But again, think about MVCC the way you are thinking about your source control system, because this is exactly what it is, with some slight difference when it comes to B-trees. So the question is, why do I need, I said we, but why do I need a VCC, for instance, here? And in Apache Directory Server, that's pretty, pretty simple. We are using B-trees all over. Again, we are storing data, we are storing 
in, we have indexes to reference source data. And uh, we need um, to store some of them in memory for performance issues, reasons. And we also need to support transaction because every time we inject data into a directory server, we will have to update many indexes at the same time. And if we don't want that those modification uh, to be a, an issue for anyone accessing the directory server at the, at the very same time. Uh, so this is one of the reasons I started to build Mavibot. Uh, there was another reason that the B tree we were using is GDBM to name it. It's not very efficient in terms of uh, implementation. Uh, it does not support transaction. At least it's claimed to have a proof concept, which is not good enough for what we do. Uh, it does not support crash recovery system. We have to build it on top of what we have done. That means adding a journal and dealing with the crash if when it, when it occurs, something we don't want to deal with. So this is clearly not even enough for what we need in the Apache Directory server. Plus, we do think that such a B tree with MVCC is probably interesting for other projects. So what are our options? Because of course, it would be stupid to develop something which already exists. So we studied what existing BDB, Berkeley DB, has support for MVCC. Sadly, it has been bought by Oracle two years ago, three years ago, and I know that they are going to change the license right now. So uh, we won't be able to use it on an Apache software project. Um, plus, we have an issue with BDB that it does not support multi-value for uh, B trees. M by multi-value, I mean when you inject a new uh, key into a B tree, you might want this key to be associated with many values. This is very helpful for for directory server when you can have many values associated with, uh, for instance, object class can have many different values. Another option is LMDB developed by Owarchu, part of the OpenLDAP um, team, uh, which is exactly the same kind of uh, B tree that Mavibot is supposed to be, except that it's developed in C. And it has one drawback is that you, you have to define one file with the exact dimension of what you want to use, and you won't be able to grow it dynamically. I mean, if you want to have a file bigger, then you have to stop your server, grow the file, and restart the server, which is a bit of a burden for us. Of course, it comes with excellent performances because it's a memory mapped file. Uh, maybe, but won't do that. So at some point, we have to think about the consequences of such a choice. There is another uh, project called HoutDB, which has been uh, started two years ago or three years ago, but uh, since then, no commits. It's backed by a company called FuseSearch, and sadly, I don't have no documentation about it, uh, and no commits since, since three years ago. So for me, it's a dead project, so no reason to, to start from it. So Mavibot. So the story is quite interesting. Back in 2006, for the first Apache conference I attended, or the second one, uh, we discussed about CouchDB, uh, which was, uh, I don't know if you have heard about it, but it's a, uh, a system where you have replicated data, and this is all about MVCC. And I thought it was what we needed for Apache directory server, but it's written in Erlang, so that doesn't fit uh, our needs. We also had reached the GDBM limit, and uh, we had to, to add logs to all the server. That was a no-go. So the feature we wanted to add into uh, Mavibot are those one, MVCC first. Second point, we want to be able to add transaction across multi B3. That means I want to be able to update one B3, a second one, a third one, and commit all those modifications in one shot or roll back everything. That's critical for us. Of course, crash resistance. Is I, if I switch off my computer like I did at the beginning of this presentation, I want my data to be safe in any case. I want also bulk load to be able to load fast the data. So let's see how it works inside. We have two different flavors of, of maybe both B trees. First one is in memory B trees. And here is very simple uh, picture which exposes how it works. Uh, those are B trees which might be backed on disk if needed, but everything is done in memory. So it's extremely fast as soon as you have enough memory to support all your data. 
as you can see, you have just a node, three leaves here, and the data are just pointed directly. And second flavor, which is for us very important, is the persistent B tree, where everything is now baked and stored on disk. Every time we do a modification, it's written directly on the disk. So you can bet that write won't be fast. We don't care because what we want to do is having something very, very fast when it comes to read data. The data are stored on disk, loaded on demand, and uh, of course, as we don't want to load all the B3 in memory because we can have gigabyte of data, we are using references of offset on the file, and we load them on the fly. And of course, we will have some cache mechanism to avoid loading the data when needed. So it's a little bit more complicated, but it's just because the reference are just either an offset, as we can see in the first page, or if we have a direct references, then we, we get it and the offset is not used. So internal structure of Mavibot. We do have uh, two different B trees that manage the B trees. So I'm just talking about what's going on here. Don't uh, focus on this. This is just internal, internal soup and uh, just I will come back to that. We use a B tree of B trees, which maintain a revision for each B tree we are using. So every time you are updating one B tree, then we are also updating the B tree of B trees with the last revision of the B tree we have modified. This is absolutely critical because this is the way we will going to assure the crash uh, recovery in case of a crash. This B tree has only one single revision, of course, and every time we update it we increase the revision. It contains all the revision for all the B-trees. Second point, uh, we have to keep, as we are copying page, every time you do, uh, we do a modification, uh, at some point the, field, the file will grow and grow and grow without any bound, and this is not something we can accept. So what we do is every time we update a B-tree, we keep a track of the page, pages we have copied. And these pages are going into a special B tree and they will be used to manage the free pages when we need to reclaim them. I will explain them later. And we, of course, have a free page management for the exact same reason. As soon as we have released some pages, we want to be able to use it again for the next revision or the next addition or modification done on any B tree. And this is done through a free page, free page manage management. Physical layout, again, I'm going very down here, but we are going up after these big depths. Uh, the physical layout are just made so that we are close to the physical layer. Uh, page size, page size might, might be something like four kilobytes if your system support four kilobytes, but this is something you can size. And we are just mapping every logical page on those uh, physical pages, which contain raw data plus pointer to the next. So every page is linked to the other one, and we will just reuse and map the way it's shown in the schema, local page to physical pages. This is very simple data structure, again. <coughs> and the last element which is important is the record manager header. This is the only single element which is at the very beginning of the file, it's only one single page, and this is where we store the reference to the current B tree of B trees that we have seen at the first point, and the reference to the copied page B trees. If we have a crash, we will use this data structure to restore the B trees. So this part is the only critical element and we want to protect it at all costs. That means that every modification on the B tree, on any B tree, will update this data structure. I will expose how it works later. Okay. A quick show on a B tree header, which contains information about any B tree we store. Uh, basically, we have a revision, the number of elements we store in the B tree, plus a pointer to the root page, which is a page which contains all the elements and uh, some information of the B tree about the B tree, sorry. For instance, the key serializer we are using and the value serial serializer we are using, plus the fact that this B tree can allow duplicates value. That's it. And now if we see the file, it's organized a bit like this way. Each B tree header points to a root page. Uh, we have here three different B trees, and of course, on top of it, you have a 
a B3 of B3, which is containing a reference to B3 headers, etc. Okay. Page layout is a bit too complex and you can't see it, so I put it on the slide just in case. Uh, it's not very important. That are the data structure inside the server, inside the B3. It's not very complicated. Uh, as soon as you get the slide, you will see it's, it's quite technically not, not very complicated. So let's see how we apply operation on any B3 in this structure. An addition is a little, a little bit more complex than what you can think about it when, when it's only a single B3. The first thing we do, of course, is creating a new revision. Let's say we are on revision 1000, then we start with 1001. Then we define the page, the page that we are just going to modify, and we copy them directly. Uh, we never modify an existing page, that's the key. We copy what's inside and we modify the copy. That's a new version. We inject the value into uh, the leaf uh, of the B tree. Then once it's done, we have to create a new B tree header which will point to this new page. As soon as we have created the new header, then we will have to copy the new B tree header with its revision into the B tree of B tree. And you can imagine that we have to go up to the beginning and redo it again because it's a B tree. Then we have to do the same thing for the page we have copied. Then we put them into uh, the B tree, the copy page B tree. Update at the end the record manager header to reference the latest B tree of B tree and B tree copied pages. We can free the page we don't use anymore. Update the record manager a second time and we're done. As you can see, it's not a simple operation. The addition into a maybe bot cost a lot. So uh, to figure out a bit more what's going on inside, I've presented a B3 with a simple one value, which is E. We cut a new revision. We add a new value, which is A. Then we just copy the first element, and it's becoming the new element with revision two containing two values. If we add a third value, same thing. Here we have added a D. Let's say that uh, any node can contain only two values or two keys. Then we have to split the first node. We create a new revision, R3, with two, two children. And now that we are just trying to add a new element into the right node. And what we can see here, it's interesting, that we just copy the top level node plus the right children, child, and we do, a, we do make a reference to the existing revision three node. Okay, so here we're just copying two nodes, not three. So if you have thousands of nodes, keep in mind then, when you are doing a modification of a B tree, you are not copying the, the global B tree, where you are just copying the pad you are modifying. Okay, that's the way it works at the very bottom of B tree's modification. Yes, absolutely. As you can see here, you have R1, R2, R3, R F and R4, okay. okay? We keep the R4 root page point to R4 revisions and R3 revisions. That's important to understand. But the R3 revision is shared between this B3 and this B3. What is important at this point is that anyone having access to this B3 can see the ancient revision without any issue, okay? And the one who is now accessing R4 will see the new revision. You can modify this one, but you won't see it. Again, the one who is just consulting this B3 won't see modification done on R4. That's a real key in MVCC B3s. Browsing, much simpler. You just have to grab the latest revision. So here it could be R4, or it could be R3. And you cut a cursor on it, and then you return the cursor to the user. The, the user will just browse the B3, grab information, data from, from the B3, do whatever he wants. And when it's done, close the cursor. Closing the cursor is critical because at this point, you 
you are just giving a signal to the system that, okay, this revision is not used anymore, so now you can reclaim pages which are not seen by anyone. Why? The key is that when you get into a B3 and just grab a revision, you usually don't give a revision you want to see. You just tell, give me the latest revision. So all the previous ones are dead. We can garbage collecting somehow. And this is what we do at the end. When the cursor is closed, we freeze the revision. If the revision is not anymore in use, we can claim, reclaim all the copied page, pages. So in the schema we have right here, when the revision three is dead, we know that we can reclaim the revision two page because nobody will access this anymore. Okay? And the same thing as R3 has been uh, deleted, uh, closed, then um, we can reclaim the, the top page of R3, R3, which is this one. But we can't reclaim this one because it's used by R4. So that's, that's uh, just a way to expose how browse is done. In fact, we position the cursor at the very beginning of the B3 and then we will up, up and up on every value, forward and backward if needed. It's a cursor. So now, uh, it's a system where we can manage more than one B3. Uh, and I will just show you the, it will not be very visible, but operation which allows you to add a new B3 into the system. It's quite a complicated operation, but basically what we are doing is updating the B3 of B3s by adding a new B3 into it. And this is done in four different, three different steps. Um, okay, can't exactly see what's going on, but there are four different steps where we are updating B3s of B3s, updating uh, the copy page, creating the B3 info, creating the B3 header, and at the end we reclaim the pages which are not anymore in use, and we are safe. So again, adding a B3 edition is not, is not a simple operation, but that allows you to do it quite simply. You don't see it. Some special feature of Mavibot. <coughs> Transactions. That was one of our main issues with GDBM. It does not support transaction. We want to be able to support transaction cross B3s, as I said um, 10 minutes ago. Uh, if I update two indexes into LDAP, I want those two indexes to be either validated or rolled back at the same time. I, won't, I don't want to have one index which has been updated, but the other one which is not updated. And this is something we want into Mavibot, and it's, it's integrated. That's done with a very simple begin and commit rollback, uh, which will either validate the modification of the B3 globally or come back to the pre-provision of each B3 which has been updated. Uh, by default, we are just auto-committing everything, just so you don't have to declare a transaction. The transaction will be created automatically and committed automatically, or rollback automatically, of course. The number of operations you can do will be limited by the memory you have, of course. If you have hundreds of B-trees and you are doing a lot of modification in these B-trees inside the transaction, at some point, if you don't have enough memory, you might have an issue. So you have to be very careful when you do that. <coughs> the big advantage of having in-memory transaction at this point is that it's fast instead of having to write on disk many times, uh, we can, for instance, uh, do many additions into one B3 without having to write anything on disk before it's totally done. And uh, as we are copying a lot of pages, we can imagine that a page will be copied many times. So if we have it in memory, we don't have to fetch it on from disk and write it on disk every time. This is the key of having the transaction system building in memory. The resistance on crash is also something critical. Uh, one of the biggest issues we have with uh, standard B3 implementation is that if we have a crash, even if you have a journal, you have to read the journal back and apply every modification on the disk, and it can take, it can take a lot of time when you start with server. What we want here is, okay, you have a crash, fine. I mean, that's life, it arrives. 
But we want to be able to restart your computer, restart your server, and it's ready in a matter of less than one second. This is absolutely possible because we can guarantee that once a revision is committed, it's there, and you can restart from it without having to deal with the next revision which is pending, because it's not seen. We just don't care about the new revision which has been prepared but not finished yet. We come back to the previous revision. So how does it work? Let's see, very simple. We have a, the record manager header, which is a critical part of our system, which points to the B3 of B3, BOB. Here it's on revision 25, and we manage three different trees here, A, B, C, each of them being on one specific revision. We start to do some modification. So we have uh, added element into the B3A and modified some other element B3B. The B3C remains intact. And of course, as we have done some modification, we have updated the B3 of B3s to reference uh, the new uh, mo modified B3s. Fine, but here we have a crash. You can see that the, error, the record manager error does not point to the new revision of the B3 of B3. So here you have two possibilities. Either everything goes fine, we have committed everything, and now we just point to the new revision. That's the correct case. But if we have had a crash just before, this is what we have. We still point to the previous version, which is still visible to your user. We are just lost reference to those two modifi old modifications we have just made. That's it. So again, this is just after a restart. The user won't see the revision 27 of BOB and B3A revision 8. It's not possible to see it. You see the revision that were present before we started any modification, okay? And we don't have to compute anything. It's immediate. Eventually, we'll have to do some cleanup to reclaim those lost pages, but that's a different problem. So this is why we have this very critical page at the very beginning, because it contains references to the previous version and a reference to the new version. And if we have a pointer in both, uh, to both revisions, that means there is something wrong when we restart the server. So we just discard the new revision and come back to the previous one. So any modification is done in three steps. Sorry, up. We have at the beginning a reference to the current revision and no reference to the next revision. Then we start to do a modification, fine. We update the record manager to point to the new revision. We have now two pointers. And if we have a crash again, when we restart, we see that we have two references. We ditch the new one and we keep the ancient one. That's it, we have recovered from a crash, one single operation. Otherwise, if everything is fine, we update the record manager by saying, okay, we can get rid of the previous revision and we make the new revision the current revision. And that's it. Now we can see the new revision. That's again a single operation. But we have to update the record manager, record manager header twice. One feature we also need to implement in uh, to have implemented into a Mavibot is multi-value support. I guess I have talked about it a bit at the beginning. Uh, in LDAP, it's absolutely mandatory. We want to be able to store many values for one single K. Uh, I don't know any B3 do, having this kind of feature. What we do here to do, to do that is we have created sub-B trees. That means a value can be a B3 itself, managed by the exact same system with revision and so on. But it's implemented into the system. You don't have to do it yourself. With GDBM, for instance, we had to do it by ourselves, which was a bit of a, an issue. One more critical information is how to be able to inject many, many, many entries at the beginning of, of, uh, of uh, when you start using it. Let's say you have 10 million elements to store into a B3. You want to be able to inject in without going through uh, many additions because every addition copies many files. Uh, hopefully we can do it on B3s, it's quite simple. Um, assuming you, you have your data ordered, 
you just load the, the leaves first. And every time you have loaded a leaf, you take the, the left children and you copy it on the node which is just above. And when the node is, is full, then you do it again. And this way you can build the tree very, very efficiently and quickly. You don't have to, to, to go through the whole process. Of course, this is offline. You can't do it when the server is started. Uh, but it allows you to, to load the server in probably something like one or 2,000 times faster than by adding the entry element by element, one by one. So still, that's what we are wanting to do. There are some kind of challenges uh, because it's not that easy. One of them is a cache. Um, of course, um, we won't be able to have something efficient if we have to, to read the disk every time we want a value. Uh, we can store millions and millions of entries and we won't necessarily have the memory to get everything in memory. So uh, we need some cache and we need many different kind of caches. Uh, of course, best would have to be, it would be to have cache that store every node and every leaf and every value. That's fine, but then you don't need necessarily to have a B tree. Um, the cache is an issue uh, because you have to find the right size. Let's say you have two gigabytes of memory and you want to deal with 10 gigabytes of data, then you know that your cache has to be sized correctly. Um, usually what you store is the top level nodes because they are often read from the disk. So having them in cache will allow you to avoid reading them on disk. Um, a cache sadly will be shared between all the process on the threads. So that needs a bit of flock. And we try with weak references. Don't do that. That does not fly at all. Um, at some point you are depending on the garbage collector itself and the garbage collector does not have any guarantee on how it executes itself. And what we have seen is that the performance are just terrible. So you need something more smarter than, than simply depending on, on weak references. Um, internally, right now we are using EHK, uh, which is quite a big, so we might use something a bit lighter like a LRU cache uh, to solve this issue. Another aspect is that, of course, you are writing data onto disk and reading from disk. And every time you do it through a standard, uh, standardized um, um, I/O operation, you are going through uh, many copies of the memory. And it would be very interesting to have a zero copy system. And that could be done through mem memory map file. But the point is that the memory map file has a fixed size. So you either start with a fixed size, and then we are back to LMDBC problem that you have to define how much memory you need. So at this point, is this really an issue? We had long discussion with Howard on, on that. Um, on Linux, it's not an issue. Let's say you have a disk which is one terabyte of disk. You can define a one terabyte mem map memory mapped file. It won't create it anyway. It will just create what is needed to store your data. Do that on Macintosh. It will really create a one terabyte file. And it will take minutes and you won't have any room for your, for your space. So at some point, we, we might decide to go and use memory method file inside Navibot for performance issues. Performance is much better, really. That might be an option at some point. Serialization is probably was one of the most costly operations. I was very surprised at the very first test I did um, with pages containing 16 values. Uh, and many, many, uh, when I had a big B tree with many, uh, many entries, like uh, 100, 100 of thousand of, of entries, at some point, serialization was problematic for the reason that my cache was small. I wanted to test uh, the cache at some point. And every time I wanted to read a page, I had to read the page from the disk, and I was deserializing all the values into it. And then the page was just discarded and read again from disk. And again, all the values were redisalized. And it was so incredibly costly that I had to find another solution. The other solution is that wasting a bit of memory to keep a reference to something, an offset on, on the serialized value, uh, instead of just having the value or nothing. And of course, 
it's, it's a balance between performance and memory size. But here, the performance is much better. It's four or five times faster doing this. That just desalizing every time. Debugging this system is a nightmare. Uh, when it's per system on disk, uh, I have no tools right now. So I have to extend the file to see uh, if every offset is correct. And with four kilobyte pages, no fun. Uh, I have some students working on some tooling to expose B3, allows you to you know, step through the modification. Uh, it's not yet done. Students are lazy those days. Performances, uh, that's quite interesting to have um, a test when you're doing, um, when you are uh, using MaviBot, for instance, on a spinning disk or on SSD, the performance are radically different. Um, I do think that SSD right now are uh, pre pretty much only disk used on, on, on decent servers. Um, you will have an order of magnitude per difference in performance when using spinning disk. So um, I was asking myself, should I just take care of, spin of the way the spinning disks are working? And that, no, fuck it. It's, it's cost nothing now to buy SSD and um, doesn't does mean to have uh, any difference. The other things I was thinking about was using unsafe. Uh, unsafe is a way to access direct memory more efficiently. Um, it's a bit of a trick. It, it will change in Java 9. Okay, I'm not sure that Java 9 will be out anytime soon, but still. Uh, those are questions that are right now to be discussed. So we remind, I remind that this is an ongoing project. Uh, we just have released uh, a milestone, four milestones up to now. So um, those discussions are uh, interesting to have right now before uh, it's already done. And for the cache, I was thinking about uh, what is good to have one single cache with mini logs or should we just have a thread local cache so that we don't have to have any logs of course, it's memory dependent. The more memory you have, more question you can solve. So, as I said, it's not finished yet. We have some to-dos, some, some uh, features which are not yet implemented. And the major feature which as I'm working on right now is how to recover uh, free pages. That means page for revision which has been released by any thread reading them. It's not quite easy. Um, we can release easily the top level page because nobody is going to use it anyway. But for pages which are shared by many revision, we have to know if we can release them or not. One simple algorithm would be to say that we know which is the oldest revision being used. When this oldest revision being used is released, then we know what we can get rid of all the pages which has been copied from this old revision. And we can do it up to the next oldest revision. That's fine because it's straightforward. You have nothing to compute. You just use a copied page, B3, to, to recover those pages, which are not in more in use anyway. This is what is doing LMDB. This algorithm is correct, it works, but if you have a rogue transaction, rogue thread, which keep an old revision forever, your file will never be cleaned. And this is an issue LMDB is having right now. Another solution is a bit more complex because you can imagine that you remove a revision in the middle of many revisions. And you have to decide which page can be released, assuming that they may be used by older or newer revisions. Well, I know, I know an algorithm that could work. It might be a very costly algorithm. So that has to be discussed. In any case, free page management is expensive because we have to update many B trees. We have to update the free page management list, free page list, and we have to update the free uh, B tree of B tree pages. So again, that's that's quite critical for maybe, but to have to, again to understand that this is a system for reads. It's not a system for writes. We favor reads. If you have to favor writes use any other B3 system, it will be more efficient. We don't favor writes. We don't care if writes are slow. 
In memory transaction, I just mentioned them. Uh, this is critical for us because uh, we want to avoid as much as we can writes, which are costly. Uh, doing this with in-memory transaction allows us to modify page in memory instead of memory, modifying page on disk. Uh, of course, once transaction is committed, everything is flushed on disk, but we might save a lot of writes in this process. Post-crash cleanup, I mentioned the fact that when we have a crash, we can recover instantaneously. That's fine, but we are leaving page behind. So we probably need some way to clean up those pages we have um, lost. And this might be costly, but we can just read everything in a special thread. And for a page which has not any link to any B3, then we know that we can reclaim them. Not necessarily a big deal. I mean, here, it has to be discussed. Uh, another aspect, where, um, right now, in my mind, we just don't need to keep any revisions. We just have to keep the latest revision. But we might think about a system where we want to be able to access oldest revision, like for any uh, like subversion of Git, where you can just tell, OK, give me revisions that is two days or three days old, because I need it. And um, we can do it with maybe bots. That means we won't just delete any pages. The file will grow grow and grow, but still that allows you to work with older revision. In some cases, that might be interesting to have. And technically, this is quite easy because it's just a matter of not deleting anything. Oops. That's it. I would like to thank Kiran, who is working with me on Apache directory, and he wrote part of the project, and Howard Chu uh, for the lengthy discussion we had. On, on this project, because LMDB and MaviBot are pretty much the same thing. We have sharing algorithms, trying to improve the system. Right now it's working quite decently. We have used it in Apache DS. Um, we have a set of tests. We can switch a backend in one single operation, and the test shows that it's at least two or three times faster than LMDB, uh, that G, uh, GDBM we are using. But we have to fix the issue of reclaiming uh, free pages, otherwise the file will grow insanely. So it's working, it's not finished yet, uh, but I do think that might be useful. Any question? I don't know how different is it from Oak, for instance. Yeah. No, um, they are totally free. I mean, uh, we don't have any limitation. It's just pure, pure Java objects. You have key serializer and, Java, um, and value serializer. It's up to user to define them. So um, if you want to store strings, you can store strings. Integer, that's fine. Up to you. Can be big objects if you want, but of course that would be more costly because you have to store them into small phases, small pages. So um, might be not the most efficient way to do it. I think Oak deserved, uh, I mean, uh, OK is targeting a different audience because you want to be able to, and I think you do it a bit differently too. When, when you have concurrent modification, you are just trying to merge them later. In MaviBot, we don't allow multiple uh, modifications at the same time. Modifications are serialized in a queue, and they are done one by one. So of course, um, uh, that's different. <coughs>
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, hopefully, when I think that when you are doing modification in memory, what's going on is that you are using a, a specific revision. So, uh, of course, you, you will just see uh, what you are modifying and, and not something that uh, other, any other one can modify. Yeah, but yes, at some point, you will have many, many different things in memory. And that's the limitation of in memory transactions. Uh, this is what most of the B3 implementation, are, which are supposed to, or which are implementing MVCC are doing anyway. They are just doing it in memory. And you can think about it, for instance, in Oracle RDBMS. What you have at some point with when, when you are starting a transaction, doing a lot of modification, when I mean a lot, I mean millions of modification, at some point you can have some error message like reprolog full, which means basically your memory of in memory transaction is, is full. And, and you're dead because you're, you can't commit anything. You have to roll back everything and restart and expect that nobody will just uh, hit the memory you need for doing this. In this case, it's not that much what's going on. Um, it's, it's done on an area nobody will see and, uh, un until it's, it's committed or rolled back. So. Like? I never heard about it. This is something we can discuss, but. Uh yeah. Um, one, one, one thing could be interesting is to have, instead of using B trees, choosing um, ash trees. Um, but that does not work well with what we need, something which is ordered. I mean, keep in mind again that that has been started uh, to replace GTBM in Apache Directory Server. And for any system that requires that the value are ordered, you can draw them in both sides, uh, forward and backward, uh, and it has to be fast and, and uh, concurrent. There's not hundreds of possibilities. Okay. Yeah. That's very different. Okay, thank you very much.